Okay, so we're back with our 87 Trooper. And I think the last time you saw this was only the one video. I was pretty much getting the old engine out and getting this engine in. Uh, you know, since then I moved and I wanted to drive it to the new house, which I did. So there wasn't a ton of footage on the whole uh, getting it running part, but it was, you know, fairly straightforward. Get fuel in it, uh, put all the fluids in it, and just drive it, ran fine. Uh, the only thing that's come up is we've got a coolant leak. I don't know if you can see it. Where that water manifold goes into the block, you can see the coolant down there. I don't know if I cut the o-ring going in or if it's just slightly too small or what, but we're going to try and change that. And the typical, or the, uh, I should say difficult part, is that water manifold passes through the engine mount bracket. So the unknown is, will I have enough room to pull it out of the block and get that o-ring off? Or will I have to support the motor and unbolt that bracket? But uh, that's what we're going to find out. Okay, so we had a battery issue. I don't know how much of that you just saw, but it was pretty straightforward. Just pop in this bracket off. There's three bolts. Two are easy to see. One's kind of tucked behind the manifold, but you can get it. Now for this, there is a bolt on the bottom side just to hold it in. I think it's a 12. Yes, it is a 12. You do have enough room to do this without pulling the engine mount off. The o-ring itself looks okay, if it'll focus. There you go, looks okay. There's a little bit of rusty paint on it, that might be the issue, but I think it might be a touch small. That was a pretty easy one to get out of there. And 
I mean the groove that sets in on that water manifold is a lot thicker. Yeah, so I could probably get a fatter one in there. Okay, so I ran out, made it just before Lordco closed, and got the next thickness up o-ring. Uh, there's the old one. So, it'll be a bitch to get in there, but that should do the trick. I've cleaned this out with a little bit of emery cloth, or scotch bread I should say. And I've cleaned out the receiving bore. There is a bit of a groove of pitting where the old o-ring sat, but... Eh, we'll just go for with it. Okay, so this is how the trooper repair is gone. Fixed that coolant leak finally. Took a couple weeks trying different O-rings. Got her all fixed up, got a new set of tires on her, and thought, hey, let's go wheeling for the first time in, in a few years. Well, you might be able to hear it coughing and farting. The second we hit the gravel road, it started flooding out. I think combination of the hills and the bouncing and the electric fuel pump with no regulator is causing this Weber to flood out of the vent. Oh, hold on, got a shift. Oh, she just died. There we go. It's causing the Weber to flood out because the vent of the Weber will go straight down into the uh, throttle bores. So that's where I'm at and I'm trying to get it back out to the road and get her home before I kill my starter out here up on the trails. So next video we're gonna be looking at a fuel pressure regulator for this thing and a couple of tricks for making a Weber climb hills. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.